Sometimes a very small inconvenience in a theory can lead to a major discovery. And this was also the case in 1905, when Einstein published his famous paper about the electrodynamics of moving bodies, which is more famous under the name of Special Theory of Relativity. And the major role in this discovery was not the Michelson-Morley experiment, but a simple thought experiment with a magnet and a coil. To understand how exactly induction helped Einstein discover special theory of relativity, we need to recall something called Galilean principle of relativity. This principle was introduced by Galileo Galilei in 1632, and in simple words, this principle says that there is no way to distinguish an absolute motion. So you can't know whether it is the ball in motion or you are in motion. In other words, if you are in a closed box, there is no way to set a mechanical experiment that would detect whether you are moving or stationary. So, if you are in a ship, car, plane, or even space station, if the ride is smooth and you have no windows, there is no experiment you can do to detect you are in motion. It always feels stationary for you. But with the introduction of electricity and magnetism, a lot of tension was created around this principle. Because there is this constant C in Maxwell's equations, which have a unit of velocity. And if you calculate the force acting on a charged particle in electromagnetic field, you would find that this force depends on the velocity of the particle. But force is measurable, right? So if it depends on the velocity, then we should be able to create an experiment that would detect an absolute motion. At this time, physicists believe that there must be a substance called ether, where electrodynamical processes would take place. Therefore, this C would be the speed of electromagnetic wave in this medium. And also, calculating the force acting on a particle would be convenient because you would know the velocity you plug into the equation is the speed of the particle relative to this medium. Existence of such medium would of course break the Galilean principle of relativity. Because if you are in a closed box, you can measure the speed of light in different directions and calculate your velocity relative to this medium. Provided that this medium doesn't interact with the matter, otherwise we should feel the drag which we don't. So the Galilean relativity would hold for mechanical processes, but not for electrodynamical processes. But despite this apparent problem, if you take a simple magnet and a coil, and you move the magnet through the coil, it creates a current inside the coil that you can measure. But if you leave the magnet stationary and move the coil, the generated current is exactly the same as in a previous case. So, the observable phenomenon here depends only on the relative motion of the magnet and the coil. But believe it or not, a theory of electromagnetism puts a sharp distinction between these two cases. If you have the coil stationary, according to Maxwell's equations, the moving magnet creates an electric field around itself. And if you have a charged particle, in electric field, there is a force applied onto it, depending on the particle's charge. And therefore, the energy of this field is responsible for the movement of the electrons inside the conductor, creating the current. The force applied to the electrons is described by the first part of the Lorentz force equation. But if the magnet is stationary, there is no electric field around the magnet, yet there is exactly the same force applied to electrons, creating the same current, even though there is no corresponding energy for that. For this phenomenon, we have the second part of the Lorentz force equation, which says that force applied on a charged particle is perpendicular to the magnetic field and depends on the velocity of the particle. It is not hard to imagine that the faster the magnet moves through ether, the more energetic the electric field around is, and stronger current is being created in the coil. But if the magnet is stationary, 
The magnetic field can't possibly change, it's fixed at the same value. The only thing that changes is the velocity of the particle, and somehow the faster the particle is, the stronger the magnetic force caused by the magnet. And by some miracle, it always creates the same current in the coil. It almost feels like someone put this magnetic term in the equation by hand, so that you are not able to distinguish what is really moving, making the current in the coil dependent only on the relative motion between these two bodies. As if somebody wanted to preserve the Galilean relativity also in electromagnetism. And this was what boggled Einstein's mind the most about electromagnetism. And this is what he had to say about this problem. Examples of this sort, together with the unsuccessful attempts to discover any motion of the Earth relatively to the light medium, suggest that the phenomena of electrodynamics as well as of mechanics possess no properties corresponding to the idea of absolute rest. So, put simply, this induction experiment, together with the fact that any other attempts to discover this mystical substance called ether were unsuccessful, and therefore, in Einstein's mind, the existence of ether was redundant. Because even though it would exist, physics doesn't depend on the motion relative to this medium in a sense that there is no possibility to create not only mechanical but also electrodynamical experiment that would detect a motion relative to this medium. And therefore we don't have to bother with ether whatsoever. Einstein further argued that Experiments like this rather suggest that the same laws of electrodynamics and optics will be valid for all frames of reference for which the equations of mechanics hold good. Which simply means that if you work with frames of reference where Galilean relativity for mechanical processes hold, it will also hold for electrodynamics and optics. And then he raises this statement to a status of a postulate, creating first out of two postulates of special theory of relativity. Then, since there is no need for light medium, despite the velocity of light appearing in the Maxwell's equations of electrodynamics, Einstein introduced another postulate, which, as he says, is only apparently irreconcilable with the former, namely, that light is always propagated in empty space with a definite velocity c, which is independent of the state of motion of the emitting body. So, if the velocity of light does not depend on the relative motion of the source, and according to first postulate, all velocities are relative, then this means that all observers have to measure the same speed of one particular photon even though all the observers are in relative motion. Then Einstein continues in his paper saying that the view here to be developed will not require an absolutely stationary space, provided with special properties, nor assign a velocity vector to a point of the empty space in which electromagnetic processes take place. Basically saying that ether is not required in a theory he is going to propose. So, according to first postulate, all velocities are relative. But what about acceleration? If you want to find out, check this video. Thank you for watching and I see you there.